You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and we have the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who his river's in our backyard. You always hear John Denver when he comes on the show. Um, Travis Eden, Kingfishing Adventures. Sir, thank you so much for coming back on. This time last year, we started. Jared, right? It's about... We're about three weeks away from the anniversary of this actually starting. And this guy right here was one of our nice. first guests for this crazy thing that we were trying to do. <laughs> and to really celebrate one year anniversary uh, and to say thank you to Travis, we're going to be actually auctioning off a fishing trip with Travis. Hey, everyone. We are doing a special giveaway to celebrate our one year anniversary of the podcast. That's right. Fishing the DMV is one year old. And to celebrate the occasion, we're giving away a fishing trip with Travis Eden of Kingfisher Guide Services. He operates out of the Shenandoah River and the Upper Potomac River. And we're giving you four unique ways that you can try to win an opportunity to fish with him. Number one, all online orders with Jake's Bait and Tackle. Go to Jake's Bait and Tackle website, whatever you order. In the comments section of your order, just put the hashtag fishing the DMV and you enter a chance to win. Number two, all orders in person. Just go to the store and say you'd like to enter the contest. Again, hashtag fishing the DMV. That's two ways. Number three, if you don't have any money, if you're one of my younger audience, because I know I have a lot of kids that listen to the podcast, I'm giving you two ways that you can do it that's absolutely free. Go to Apple Podcasts, go to Apple Podcasts, and leave a review of Fishing the DMV podcast. And at the end of your review, just put the hashtag fishing the DMV, and you had a chance to win. Now, I'm going to give you a fourth way that you can enter the competition. On every video that drops from November 15th to December 15th, every new video that, that's on the channel, in the comments section, just put the hashtag fishing the DMV. Now here's a caveat, it's every video. So if you miss one video, I'm not gonna be able to count you, but it's free. All you gotta do is in every new video from November 15th to December 15th, in the comments section, just leave the hashtag fishing the DMV and you have a chance to win. So four ways if you want to. Make an order online and leave the hashtag fishing the DMV. Go to Jake's Bait and Tackle in person and tell them hashtag fishing the DMV. Number three, leave a review of the podcast on Apple Podcast with the hashtag fishing the DMV. And number four, on every new video that drops from December, I'm sorry, from November 15th to December 15th, leave the hashtag fishing the DMV in the comments section. And that gives you four unique opportunities to win. I mean, we got so much stuff I want to talk about. I want to continue this conversation right now with um, with the river right now and how it's so cool that when I was a kid, the river was terrible. We, we've talked about this at nauseum. And mm-hmm. then the, the, the spark in your eyes, like it's back, you know, the Shenandoah, Upper Potomac. We had Jeff, I had Jeff Green on and his episode dropped, I think it was on Tuesday of this past week. And he had like a 60, 70 fish day. Yeah. And they weren't big but the fact is that's still like a fish every like five to ten minutes that's fun yeah yeah dude it's it's coming i'm telling you it's coming from the the fish that i've been seeing this year (laughs) i mean give it another year or two man and it's gonna be what is that has it been eight years since the the big kill ten uh ah, it's been longer than that you know, all the Shenandoah fish kills were in the early 2000s. Um, specific dates, I don't know, but they were in, you know, like, oh, I know 04 there was. So it was over 10 then ish. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, but then we've had the other issues as well, you know, that have gone on, you know, high water events, 2018. Mm-hmm. My goodness, you know, I mean, you you couldn't fit any more water in the in either river, uh, and especially the Potomac. Um so Maryland's done a really good job with the restocking since they came up with Young of the Year that were no more uh, from high water events that spawn and post spawn. And uh, the Potomac's been fishing really well. The, really well. And then that's something we'll get in. I've been, I've, I've been fishing. I mean, I've been fishing. Um, I fished both the Shenandoah and the Potomac. Here recently, I've been fishing more of the Potomac. Uh, below or above Harper's? At, at Harper's Ferry. Oh, right at. Okay. In, in below. Okay. Uh, down to, you know, I usually don't get down to Point of Rocks, all the way down to Point of Rocks. Water's been low. 
so it's been real tough to move around uh and it's like you know you're nine nine and a half mile stretch you know is really ends up being a 10 hour day out on the river because you're going all over the place trying to get down um so i've been shortening the, the stretches and stuff a little bit and then that way we can focus on more and um but i've been fishing the shenandoah as well and i mean honestly they're both i mean versatile i mean the shenandoah dumps into the potomac so mm -hmm. i mean it's the largest tributary of the potomac um but yeah they've both been fishing i mean very good that's freaking so, awesome because it's like it feels like it's just up in comments for like the how size of the fish man you know i mean it's like you know like we've caught the past this past week i did all potomac stuff and i mean just so much in the way of that uh 16 15 to 16 inch smallmouth and uh they're chunking up so they're most of them are you know pretty fat i mean we caught we were kept, we caught a couple dinks over the past week that were, you know, like that long. Dude, they, they, they were the like, they were, I mean, just huge. Like, 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 damn, dude. Like, yeah, you go, man. Yeah, you like, go. You are going to be, you're going to be fit. You know, you're going to make it through the winter, no problem. And and it is so cool to say like this river in our backyard. These mm -hmm. two rivers are coming and. The walleye, we're gonna get to that too, because that's exciting yeah. as well. So yeah, what's been going on in yeah. your neck of the woods? Uh it's 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 been a it's been a really good fall. Low water that we've had, gin clear, uh, but you know, the fish are there and they're hungry. Warm temps as well. Uh, you know, have really kind of um I mean, I was out with uh two other guides last night, uh hanging out at one of their houses and we were talking about how, you know, we it's been a while since we've seen a a warm fall like we've had mm -hmm. um and a fall that hasn't been very wet of course you know today it's we've got some rain going on and stuff and rivers are going to bump up but um <clears throat> nothing out of control and uh, i mean it's just been a spectacular the whole season in itself has been pretty spectacular as far as fish caught the numbers and stuff we're really seeing a change in both rivers uh you know as far as that's concerned and uh you know i've had trips out over the past uh you know october uh the month of october where we would boat 40 fish and i'd have like one angler in the boat wow so that's a lot of fish for that's like one person you know fish. i mean granted i get to i make a few casts you know here and there as well but uh yeah you know good times what how much longer and we talked about this off air you know, as we always do is, is fish heads. People don't like going in the fall, in the winter, late, late fall, winter time, mm -hmm. which is a shame. Mm -hmm. And I always have some questions here with this. Is it because people don't like fishing in the fall or is it because the Shenandoah and Potomac River are not quite there yet? Where example is the Susquehanna, especially in its prime. There are a ton of people that go out for the winter trips there. Yeah. And and how much did both play a factor into it? Yeah. I, you know, I think that I think the reason that um, around here that a lot of folks don't go out in the winter is for one i mean not everybody's a winter person you know a lot of folks want to you know cozy up inside next to the fireplace you know with a hot cup of cocoa uh me on the other hand i would like to just go out there and get on the water and it's like never too cold for me to get out there and fish and i catch probably the majority of my personal citation fish throughout the year are caught in the winter time Hmm. so uh and it is uh it's actually sometimes kind of like shooting fish in a barrel and i've had winter winter days of fishing where two of us would boat 25 fish in a day so wow yeah that's kind of you know i, I won't say it's unheard of but uh you know it's it's a possibility and i will say you know that you know the fish that you get in the winter time uh they're not uh they're not the dinks so uh you know that 25 fish day every fish that was boated was 15 inches if or bigger with a couple citations two or three citations that's mixed so in fun. there so yeah that's so much fun. that's a good day what 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 right now how many days per week are you actually out guiding is, is it like i would think right now this would be like prime time yeah um it, it's tail it's tailed off uh my october started out uh a little on the slow side 
uh, or at least I thought that it was. And uh, it just escalated, and it's like everybody was like, "All right, well, you know, we do have some warm weather, you know, here. Let's let's do uh, let's go out and go, you know, fishing." Um, so, I mean, I was running up until this week. I was running uh, five days a week. Wow, out on the river. That's so, freaking. That's yeah, awesome, dude. Congrats. Yeah, that's that's. It's probably the best October that I've ever had. Really? Yeah, that's fantastic, yeah. guys. And then get guys again. Please like and subscribe to like all mm -hmm. of his content on social media. He has an Instagram, Facebook page, everything. Really follow him. He's a bastion of knowledge, and he's really key cornerstone to really this this fishing community here in the Shenandoah Valley. Um, what portion of the Shenandoah do you really focus on between October and let's say Christmas? Is it the north south? Is it the main main stem? Main stem. Stem. Main stem. I've got to got my eyes on uh, a spot or two on the South Fork for some winter fishing. Uh, but see, here's the thing with uh, with that winter fishing is that water levels, okay, uh, can dictate sometimes where those fish are. Uh, low, gin clear water, you'll see fish moving in the shallows. Some some of us think, you know, feel that those fish will move up into those shallows because the rocks tend to warm up more. Uh, but also, I've got a feeling that some of those fish are moving from deep hole to deep hole because that's what you do in the wintertime is you just fish deep. Mm. Don't bother with the shallow. you you got to fish deep. Uh, it's tough when that water's gin clear to fish any of the shallows. You're fishing downstream all the time. And, you know, your hookup ratio is a lot less fishing that than if you go to the deep holes. What is, so there's two parts to this question. Mm -hmm. What is deep relatively for the Shenandoah? Deep, deep relatively for the Shenandoah would be six to, you know, 15 feet deep. Oh, wow. That's uh, there's some deeper spots on the Shenandoah uh, as well. Uh, but you want, you want deep water because that's where they go in the wintertime. They, their metabolism slows down. Uh, they're, uh, you know, a bit slower to bite. Uh, and sometimes the bite can be, uh, a, a vicious bite like it is through the summer. Sometimes it's a very subtle, you know, you feel your bait being, you know, just kind of like a tug, like maybe, you know, are you stuck on a stick in the water or something like that? Uh, but you know, you set the hook and I mean, sometimes it's, it's a big fish. Um, uh, but wintertime is definitely, um, I think it's, I think it's not, it's overlooked as mm -hmm. far as uh, potential. And again, like I said, I don't think, I think that a lot of folks just aren't into the winter stuff. It's the hardcore nuts like myself, you know, and, and yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, you get the whole, you get the water to yourself. Mm -hmm. You got the chance to catch a big one. Yeah. Um, and I think what's interesting with the smallmouth particularly is it's almost, I think personally, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, it's mm -hmm. different to try to target a big small mouth versus a large mouth. So example, guys, I can go to a couple of lakes around here, Lake Anna, I can throw a big Huddleston in the wintertime. I, I can specifically target a bigger fish knowing that if, if the line goes slack, I got a really nice trophy. Smallmouth are weird because, mm -hmm. like example, Ned Rick, well, you could catch a six incher or a fish of a lifetime. There's, Is yeah. there a way you pair up in the fall? Because usually when you're targeting trophy smallmouth compared to a large mouth, it's really not about the bait. I feel like it's more of location and then just getting it in front of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, location. I would I would agree with you on that. Uh so you know the you know the the lower, you know, I always call it uh low and slow. You know, you get out there, you throw your jig, you throw your finesse bait out there and it is just you want it on the bottom, you want it slow uh, as you possibly can. Let it marinate for a little bit uh and just sit there and uh you always want to make make sure you have contact with your bait because that slack line can be make the difference between you know trophy fish on and trophy fish not there yeah. so uh uh but also uh you know we could you know jerk baits uh things like that even crank baits uh in the winter time can really play uh, a big you know, in, in the, as far as success, uh, you know, I've, I've used, been out days and they did, just didn't seem to want a tube. They didn't want the Ned rig. They didn't want the hair jig. They wanted a jerk bait hmm. and jerk baits tend to target more active fish and it'll, it will, it's kind of like the, the, the siren and myths, uh, you know, it, calls them up off the bottom and and uh you know all of a sudden you're watching your jerkbait in the water that's and it's six feet down 
and you see that dark image rise up behind that jerk bait and you know it's at least they're interested in yeah. and that's that's half the fun is just watching it all unfold does flow rate or water level dictate so um one thing that i've i've been hearing now is like the the worst thing in the winter time is super low clear water versus mm -hmm. when you get a little bit of rain flow what does that just put them in purgatory when it's like since like as we're recording this episode guys you know it's actually finally rained it decided to rain yeah. before that it's been like dry <laughs> and yeah. low and clear yeah what about that makes it so funky for them well so um you know, with the, um, you know, water levels and stuff like that. So what happens is uh, a lot of times, right? So especially on the river, especially in the Shenandoah, uh, you don't have a lot of, uh, like on the Potomac, uh, the upper Potomac, and especially up around Harpers Ferry, you have all of those big ledges, those big rocks uh, that, um, you know, downstream side creates eddies. And those fish will go and hold in there. There's some really big eddies, uh, you know, out there around Harpers Ferry as well. That uh, where those fish are there, you know, all through the winter time. Uh, but as the water rises, like on the Shenandoah, uh, there's not a lot of that. And so a lot of times you end up concentrating more on bank eddies. And when the rot water rises, those eddies will go from being ten feet wide to all of a sudden they're two feet wide and uh so it just kind of crams the fish up in there and they'll stack up in those eddies uh you know i don't mind fishing when the water's you know running six feet uh high you know versus uh you know two feet because it's for one it narrows down exactly where they're at mm. um but they will hold two on you know in some of those ledges that are out in the middle of the river down on the um, you know, the downstream side of it where you've got current that flows over top of it, but they'll hang out down, down low, you know, where they can get out of the current. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and that's just, that is so fascinating to me. Cause like, it, I would almost say flip and reverse, like summertime when it's low like that and you're walking through every hole, you know, they'll eat anything, you know, mm -hmm. in that fast current, yeah. but then you flip around in the winter time and yeah, it, they it, want it, no current. they want no current at all. <laughs> and, and it's such a subtle little change, but yeah. it, it can, I think this is also what makes rivers so unique. I think, especially in this area where you don't have a lot of access, it, they move so much. They really do. And it's mm -hmm. so weird to think, but they, they really do. And so if you are trying to bank fish the river, you know, if you're not in the right area, you're just not going to catch them. Like they're just not yeah. literally there. Yeah. And, and guys, I don't, no matter who you have on whatever river guide or river at you have on there, this is like the, the, the common census is there are huge stretches of river that are just flat out dead. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's so important to kind of move fast slowly and really hit these areas the best yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned the upper Potomac is also mm -hmm. playing well right now too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very well. Uh, so kind of the game plan for the upper Potomac that I've been, been practicing is, uh, you know, water temps definitely dictate, uh, you know, as far as the jerkbait bite, I've been throwing, we've been throwing jerkbaits since, uh, mid September. Uh, but you gotta have the right water. You gotta have the right depths for it. Um, and they don't always, you know, eat, uh, you know, you can throw a jerk bait down through a deep stretch and not even get a look, at least not a look that you, that you know. Uh, but we've been switching it back and forth uh, on the Potomac and fishing uh, flukes or these soft plastic jerk shads uh, to, uh, hmm. and that's the, the Z-Man okay. jerk shads, uh, in the shallow stuff. And then when I get up to the, you know, something that's got any kind of depth to it, when I say any depth, I'm talking, you know, eight, six, eight feet or deeper, uh, you know, we're throwing jerk baits. So right now, go from like number three, because I think you got three baits. There. Mm -hmm. Let's go with number well, three. Got two. I've got, got two. two. Yep. So I've got the uh, the Z-Man jerk shads uh, here. And, um, you know, it's a fluke. It's a fluke. Uh, it is made out of, out of uh, Elastec, so it is buoyant. So just your typical, uh, you know, three or four out uh, extra wide gap hook is not going to get this thing to sink. It wants to skitter across the top of the water when you fish it, uh, which you know sometimes not such a bad thing. But now you you want it down, and of course the uh, the Venom sickle hook uh and that i use typically has got is an eighth ounce uh this one here's the two-aught but i usually go with a three to a four-aught 
uh, size, something a little bit bigger, and uh, it helps get it down. And there's a couple different ways that you can fish it. One, you can, uh, and what's really been <clears throat> working a little bit better the further into the closer to winter that we get is uh, a very kind of slow, methodical, almost like a finesse bait retrieve. Uh, not a lot of jerk and not a lot of movement. Um, and, uh, and you know, they've been eating them. And, uh, and then in the deeper water, you know, we're throwing, throwing jerk baits. And I've got the Vision 110 plus one right here. Deep diver. Um, specific colors, you know, I can't really give a specific color that they eat. Because I've been having them eat all different colors and all different types of jerk baits. Uh, but this is a really good one. Hooks are like sticky like Velcro. I mean, you know, if you're wearing gloves in the wintertime and you're trying to tie this on, take the gloves off. You'll, you'll thank me. Do you go with the smaller size or, or the bigger one? Does it well, matter? Well, it, it kind of depends. You know, if, I, if I'm throwing a, a bigger size and it just doesn't seem to be getting hit in spots that I know that it would get hit in, uh, I'll reduce it down and go to the smaller size. How much of it is a visual take? Um, and I guess it does also depend on water clarity, but is this something where you're, where you're working this thing an inch off the bottom and eight feet of water, or is this where you're actually watching them track the jerk, the jerk bait down sharking it and consuming it? Well, I mean, if it's, if the water's clear, I mean, you know, you're watching it. You're watching it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, I've had over the past couple of weeks on jerk baits, I've had fish follow, like follow it in, oh, wow. but not eat, you know, very interested, but just not quite, not quite ready to commit. Uh, and then you get that you know slam on it that's so far out that you know you've thrown it you know because these things you can chuck you know a good long ways uh but you know you can't even see the bait and um you know they they'll hit it and a lot of times what i do is i take uh these baits and i learned this from a another really good uh guide and friend uh duncan mcgrath uh and that is uh to take uh a, a stripe of white nail polish and paint just right there on the head a little strip of it and then that way because this bait for example when it's sitting in the water and it's sitting upright and it's not being moved it it disappears mm. uh it's really tough to see but that white you can you can watch it uh but i, I also have to thank my buddy scotty for uh getting me into you know throwing some jerk baits and stuff like that so that's a really cool trick wow yeah and then what, what are you messing around with when it comes to line and rod? Are you are you making adjustments to that to get it up in the water column? Or do you have like a, a tried and true? Yeah, tried combo? and true, man. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a big uh, I'm a big big uh, braid guy, you know, and ten pound braid, uh ten pound leader, uh water's really clear, I'll go to fluorocarbon uh leader, uh, and uh, you know, that really seems to be seems to be doing the job and and um, you know, getting the getting it done. So when it will last tech is that just because as a guide and this is what makes sense to me mm -hmm. is it's just it one lasts bait. yeah I was it lasts say. man i mean i had i had a guy that was out with me for over eight hours uh earlier this week and he used one bait and one hook the <laughs> whole time and uh you know i was i probably should have cut it off and give it given it to him you know as a as a trophy but you know he had pictures we had pictures and stuff uh had a great day uh you know and like, like it is it's just a it's a phenomenal that elastic's a phenomenal material uh it really is. you know and and you end up uh like for example with the ned rig and that elastic you know sometimes they'll grab that tail mm -hmm. and they're not they don't have that hook and you know you're reeling it reeling it in to beat the band and uh you know they get up close to the boat and they just open their mouth up and you know so. especially the little bluegill shellcrackers yeah. or what what have you in the summertime too like yeah. that elastic is so awesome specifically for yeah. river fish uh, yeah. and, and ned rig or anything little mm -hmm. like that um do these fish on the shenandoah and the upper potomac do they act the exact same way behavior wise i mean you would think that they should but then yeah sometimes it's weird how one body of water is that different even though they're so close together yeah i mean i i find that they act very similar uh but i will say it like i i i can i'm pretty good at discerning whether one's a potomac smallmouth or one's a uh really? shenandoah smallmouth yeah yeah the shenandoah ones seem, tend to be seem like they've got almost a little blonde color to them 
huh. in their skin. But uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but you know, I, I look back at pictures and stuff like that and I'm like, yeah, that's a Shenandoah smallmouth. That's a Potomac smallmouth. That's so, so cool. But, but yes, they do act, different. they do act very much, you know, the same, you know, you're going to find a Potomac smallmouth, you know, in the same spots as you're going to find a Shenandoah smallmouth. How, I mean, is that, so guiding both sides of the river, it's pretty much the same then. It's just what, what, what makes one side better than the other? Or like what, what makes you pick, I guess, in like generic stuff? Is it just like, okay, this one just, it's just better right yeah. now? I mean, as far as guiding, I mean, sometimes I, it's the customer, you know, that, oh, I, okay. that I'll, you know, pick this, pick the uh, stretch for, uh, you know, I do offer folks the, the ability to choose a stretch, you know, if they'd rather fish the Potomac versus the, Shenandoah and because I do fish both so much uh you know I'll notice t at times that you know maybe one's not fishing quite as well as the other mm -hmm. and I'll make that suggestion to the clients and say hey you know I've been you know running a stretch on the Shenandoah it's been fishing really well you know my last couple times out on the Potomac you know kind of uneventful uh you know I'm in the business of getting people to do to the fish and getting the fish on the end of, end of their line and not to just take them down the river and you know collect their money i mean yeah yeah it's just, just so it's so interesting guys and then by the way here's another plug is we have for limited time only the shenandoah you know shenandoah t-shirts which actually have an image of an outline of the shenandoah yeah, river system and then you can also look at the base where it merges with the potomac at harper's ferry and you have these two rivers that are so unique and i think we we we'll probably talk about the conica jig here in a minute um you have the Upper Potomac and you have the Shenandoah and these two unique river systems that are so close to each other. Um, and then I've always been curious about that too. It's like, yeah, which, you know, how you make that decision. Cause it's almost like when I fish a tournament, I get paralysis if I'm on one body of water and I'm trying to make the right decision. I can't imagine when I have a paying customer being like, crap, where do I go? Yeah. Um, and I guess this all ties into like, there are tons of guides out there. Um, mm -hmm. or, there's more than just you on yes. these river systems. And I think this was not recorded. Um, which is the networking thing and the camaraderie, the brotherhood. Yeah. Is that something where there's information of like, Hey, I've, I've been skunked the last couple of times. Can you throw me some points or, and you talked about if there's a broken or you guys help each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not as cutthroat as I thought it would be. No, no, no. I mean, we're all in it together. Uh, and you know, for example, if somebody calls me up and books a trip, uh, or wants to book a trip, I should say I will. And I've, I'm already booked for it. Uh, I, you know, if I can find another guide to run that trip, I will, but if not, I will throw them in the direction of one of the other guides so that, uh, you know, I mean, we want everybody to get out and have fun and mm. catch some fish. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's very much a brotherhood, um, you know, camaraderie. I was told, I was told by, um, Mark Kovach and a couple other guides that, uh, when I first started guiding that, um, you know we're all in it together and um you know we should you know learn to help each other and not play that uh that cutthroat game um you know so we share uh data you know logistical information uh discuss sections that we've been fishing things like that to try and help each other out uh for example the other day um you know i had to get john hayes to uh who's another guide been guiding since i think 93 and uh you know i had to get him to come run shuttle for me uh, it was kind of last minute shuttle driver broke down and and couldn't run shuttle and so uh you know it was nice because i had him i was taken out at uh, uh lander's boat ramp in maryland on the potomac and i could just tell john hey you know meet me at lander's at 5 30 and uh you know he knows exactly where it is and mm -hmm. So that's freaking awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. We, and we share stuff too, you know, like what are they, what are they biting on? You know, what, what have you been fishing lately and stuff? Uh, you know, so we have a very, very good, um, uh, uh, relationship. Um, cause you almost need to, cause like you said, like you, you guys all want to make money. You're all mm -hmm. in the same business together. Um, and, and with, with that about making money there, there are other species that are, I mean, again, guys, and I'm going to put this actually, because with the miracle of editing, we're going to say it at minute 29, I'm gonna make a note of this. I'm gonna put this picture above my head that you're looking at right now, which is you caught a absolute monster walleye. <laughs> yeah. Holy God. That thing looks like it came from Lake Erie. Yeah. The walleye are a thing. Now, it's not aren't the they? biggest one I caught though. That's it's insane. The second, second biggest one I caught. <laughs> Dude, it, like, 
that looks like a big body Lake Erie style yeah. thick fish. And I know John Mulliken talked about this when we had him on the show um, with the stocking program on the Upper Potomac. Shenandoah mm-hmm. has them now too, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah. Is this becoming a walleye fishery? Is this a thing now? Like I yeah, I think so. I mean, I, like over the past uh I mean, past, past probably 2 or 3 weeks, just about every day that I've been out, we've had a walleye in the boat. You're kidding. No. So, you know, they're there and uh you know, like Virginia regulations versus the Maryland regulations are a little bit different uh, as far as the size and stuff like that, but that particular one came off of the Shenandoah. My biggest one was only half inch bigger than that one longer uh weight wise i didn't have scales but i mean the one that i caught you know just recently i mean that I, i'm sure that thing was 10 pounds if not more i mean it was are, are you getting to the point because you're catching them more are you learning something different about the behavior yet are you starting to key in on anything in particular about the way they act about the walleye yeah they love jerk baits really <laughs> yes huh they love jerk baits and they love love these uh jerk shads too you know and flukes and stuff like that so i mean that's you know the fish that you know the walleye that we've had over the past two or three weeks they've come in on jerk baits or uh or jerk shads and um you know generally you know like when i'm going going for the walleye like i like to go a little bit on the you know deeper in the deeper water uh you know tends to call them up uh john hayes and i were out the other day and uh uh fishing on the potomac uh late in the evening throwing throwing some jerk baits and bam he got this one he got it he got he had it was a big walleye come up swipe at the bait uh and then and miss came back swiped again missed and and then went away was gone and then like two casts later pretty sure the same one came up and and hammered it uh that's so cool yeah and i don't know if it's something with you know maybe their their eyes you know because i mean they're they're made uh you know designed to kind of sit on the bottom and in that dark water you know which is why their eyes are so big so Mm -hmm. that they can you know taking what little bit of light makes it down there and and help them to see uh so i don't know if that thing swung on it because it was so close to the surface you know maybe the sun was out or something like that and it kind of blinded it uh but i've had it happen too as well they'll come up kind of swipe at it and then turn right around and and hit it again so it sounds like right now like and they taste delicious i thought well, they're fantastic <laughs> i mean they're guys if you haven't like they're one of the best eating fish yes. uh, you know around and, and what was interesting to me is like it sounds like right now like catching a walleye is like a happy accident while mm-hmm. you're fishing for smallmouth is this going to slowly become a thing where you think, and I think we mentioned this earlier on the show, again, we can edit it out, um, that a guy that ran now fishing on the B side even reached out to you about the walleye fishery. Yeah. Is this something where you could see in a couple of years, you have people asking, like, I just want to target walleye. Is it, is the population I, getting big enough that that's a thing? Oh yeah. 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 And I, you know, uh, back when I first started guiding and before I got started guiding, I used to talk to some locals, especially up around Harper's Ferry, um, I knew a couple guys. Uh, one guy ran a campground on the Shenandoah there at uh, Millville, and uh, old guy by the name of Dink and Millville uh, Dam area. Is what's that, that Millville Dam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, and man, he just talked about walleye, you know, and about how good they were, and he was telling me all the places that they were and what they would eat and stuff like that. And then I met another guy that fished a lot uh, above uh, below Dam Four uh above dam three and that's you know section which is really you know parts of it are very is very flat uh flat water almost lake like and uh man that guy talked up the walleye game and i actually had the chance to stop by his house and he had probably six seven mounts of big big walleye hanging on his on his uh really wall. yeah and that guy was like a real walleye fisherman um you know that's pretty much i mean like to him like to catch a smallmouth was an incidental wow catch so but yeah i think i think that it it could uh definitely uh last year in november uh it was probably my last one of my last trips uh for 2021 uh we were on the Shenandoah and uh, we were in an uh, undisclosed location and uh, um, we pulled out cookie cutter shaped walleye and we're like 
that long. Really? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm assuming you know the Virginia uh, biologists have, have stocked those, uh, but uh, I mean, it was like you couldn't get anything bigger than that cookie cutter small. That's a good thing that walleye, that's going to be growing up in there. Yeah. Because I keep thinking of like ways for you guys to find different ways to increase your revenue, whether mm-hmm. it's like with Jeff Green, we talked about that on the other tongue about doing um flathead catfishing guide services. So like in the yeah. summertime, when if it's like in the doldrums, you can go to catfish. The musky situation on the Shenandoah and Upper Potomac, guiding for that carp on yeah. the fly, like when you had Brood X and yeah, it was insane. Yeah. The walleye, like, I mean, what other species do you think, or let me rephrase this. Besides smallmouth, what other species do people talk about the most when they go out with you? Is there another hot species that, or you think will become the hot species next for the Shenandoah and the yeah, Potomac? Yeah, you know, the, I, I get I get a lot of folks looking for uh, musky. I do get some looking for walleye, but musky is another one. And I think that a, a lot of folks just don't realize, uh, you know, I mean, if you've done any musky fishing, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think that the beginner uh, or the layman, you know, that they uh, might not realize how tough it can be to catch a musky. You know, that it's not something that just, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, for a musky, if you get a follow, that's a good day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you catch one in the in and put it in the boat that's a really good day but i know of some musky guides that you know are hot on it uh not on the potomac and the shenandoah but like on the james yeah james and big. uh you know really well known for for musky fishing so some of it you know you really like you know to really focus on a species sometimes you have to travel to to be able to put one in the boat uh but that's the nice thing about the Potomac and the Shenandoah is that they, it has so much to offer as far as uh, species to catch. So, and it's it's interesting, guys, because when I talk to to Matt and then of course uh, Mr. Mulligan, um, both of the Maryland DNR, and they talked about how on Deep Creek they're really trying to organically preserve the walleye population that is is heavily um, under pressure. Let's just say. Mm-hmm. I really think with the stocking program that they're doing on the Upper Potomac and maybe even the Shenandoah, I'm going to say just for the Maryland record, I think it's going to come out of the Upper Potomac. I think that's where it's going to drop, like not Deep Creek. It's probably going to be there just because of how passionate they are about building up that population. And they're big, too. And and guys, you might think, why not the Shenandoah? Because we have Virginia and then you have the New River. And that's literally a mutant sized walleye. They <laughs> actually have done. I want to get somebody on it the is. DNR to talk about that. Cause I think, I don't know if you heard about this, but apparently it's like, it's a unique gene yeah. down there yeah. that just makes them just insane. Yeah. Yeah. I have friends that guide on the new. Really? Yeah. And I've seen some of those mutant. Oh, they're, in, they're uh, thick. Like 30 inch. It's insane. 30 inch walleye, man. I mean, that's, that's a big that's walleye. That's a big walleye. And yeah. the new is not like the Susquehanna where it's super wide, like, you know, right. massively wide or and whatever. It's, and it's not like the Shenandoah or the Potomac. I mean, the, the new is its own, mm-hmm. it's its own creature, man. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll be heading down there here Lucky before dog. Thanksgiving. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it, you know, fun fishing with, uh, there should be about six guides out in two different boats hopefully on two different stretches so we're not fishing on top of each other talk about that is that like just a a a chill time with all you guys a therapy session what is it it is it is it's a it's a chill time you know it's time to go you know visit some new water uh you know and again you know it's that it's that camaraderie thing uh and you know that's like and i'll let me touch on this too is you know like my trips and stuff that i do it's not just about the fishing the fishing is really kind of the icing on on the cake or the cherry on top it's about there's a lot more to it the flora the fauna uh camaraderie stuff like that you know summertime you know like if i run the shenandoah you know we'll sit tables and chairs up for lunch right in the river where a cold spring pours in and you know what a great way to you know have lunch you mm-hmm. know with your ankles dangling in you know water that's you know 20 degrees colder than what the the river is uh but yeah so it's a it's a camaraderie thing and uh, and it's competitive too and there's a lot of trash talking and stuff like that that goes on. And, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a time to kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of that, you know, okay, you know, like my real busy season's over with, you know, let's go have some fun. So I'm looking really forward to it. What is so unique about the new river? Like I, that does not, I want, again, guys, if you know somebody, maybe Travis, will give me some numbers. I want to get somebody on to talk about the new river. Cause that place yeah. is so, I think it is again, 
you fact check me here. It's like one of the oldest rivers in the world. That's exactly what I was going to tell you. What makes it unique yeah. is it's old. And uh, so with the new river, um, you know, for example, I, you know, when I was out there last year, right around this time last year, uh, you know, we're floating down through these holes and uh, these big pools. And, you know, I'm you know looking over the side of the boat and I can't see the bottom of the river. And I'm at, I'm like, hey, and this is like low water. They had low water at the time. And I'm, <laughs> I ask uh, my friend Duncan, I'm like, hey, how deep is it here? He's like, oh, probably about 30 feet. Holy God. But yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a real gem of a, of a river and it's, it's unique in its, in its own right. So and it's also like a lot of it's protected or, or, or the way that there's not a lot of buildup on the river. Let's just say yeah. that compared to like, again, like the mainstay in the Shenandoah nowadays where it's like so close to DC summertime, yeah. just all the Oreos floating down yeah, yeah. the new, you're right. It's like the one time I did a float trip, I think it was for my 14th birthday. We, mm -hmm. we went down there and that was when new was like banging, like, you know, yeah. and it, it was insane. I think we saw one other float boat. Like yeah. it, it's not, it doesn't get touched a lot yeah. compared. Well, and, relatively. The, and the thing about the new too is, is that, I mean, I mean, it's a dangerous river, you know? I mean, if you, if you don't know what you're, what you're doing, uh, you could get yourself in some big trouble out there. Uh, so, you know, and that's why I like, I like going with these guys down to the new, cause I don't, I don't know a ton about it, but, uh, you know, those guys help steer me in the right direction. You know, we go to hop over one of the rapids and, you know, like they'll, they'll kind of, clue me in you know okay once you get down past this riffle you know bust it bust over to the left a little bit you know and you'll see a rock with a with a big pillow of water on it you know you want to go to the left of that rock and stuff so they kind of help me get down through for our audience that doesn't know what makes the new river so challenging or dangerous compared to I, i've heard this and again correct me if i'm wrong the shenandoah would be very like the the beginner's river for mm -hmm. floating it's very safe mm -hmm. and then the new i guess would be like it would be up there in all the other virginia maryland rivers for the danger level yeah yeah i would i would think so uh it's access you know the new runs through those deep deep you know i mean there's ridges and i mean it's you know it's not like uh so you know, River like, Runs Through It, Kevin Bacon movie. Is that what it's called? No. Uh, <laughs> that was Brad Pitt. It was man. Brad Pitt. I don't know why. That, but yeah, so guys, if you've ever seen that movie, that's the kind of gorges we're talking about yeah. here. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, even bigger than that. I mean, it's it's really is, uh, um, you know, like, you know, for example, the Potomac. Uh, I mean, if if something ever happened to you on the Potomac, you, you know, you lost your boat, whatever. Uh, I mean, you know that you would, you would get off on the left side of the river mm -hmm. and the towpath is there. Yeah. And there's people on the towpath and there's roads that, you know, come up close to the towpath, things like that. Uh, you know, kind of the same thing on the Shenandoah. I mean, there's spots of the, of the Doa that are, you know, you know, you do feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere because you can't see any signs of man. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's the big thing with the with the new, you know, and you know the water levels. I mean, because it is in such, it's a there's you know it's a gorge, and you know so uh, you know water levels can you know spike up and um, um, you know really cause you know make small rapids into big rapids and you know into big problems. All right, now are you floating below Clater Lake or above Clater Lake usually? Well, we're, we're we're solely floating in West Virginia. West Virginia, okay, gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, if you guys don't know, like the Clater Lake is actually made up from the New River, yeah. um, the New River system, and then it flows south to north, right? It goes, it, it's, yes. it's unique in how it yeah. flows too. Yeah. Just to give you guys some topography. If you want, you can Google that more. It's a, actually a very fascinating place. It really yeah. is because it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, yes, it is. So if you want to get away, that that's something too. Yep. And I love how you mentioned that about the Shenandoah River. It's so weird because if you look on the map or my, my logo, you have Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Loudoun County. And it's so weird that there is this little sliver of the river that you can be on and there is nothing around mm -hmm. when if you go like 30 minutes down the road you're in the nation's capital yeah. you're a little bit further you're in winchester that yeah. it's so crazy to me how that still exists yeah, yeah. I, I, it's one of the beautiful things about the shenandoah valley you know is, is that we have stuff like that you know we are so close to dc so you know you want to you know check out museums and city life and stuff like that you know you can go there i'm more of a country mouse myself so i like it, <laughs> I like it out here <laughs> What, um, and we, and we talked about, I think we had the other picture. We had a guy come in that caught one on the South Fork. Um, I mean, South Fork, North Fork, like, how do you, do you 
go out on your own at all to check on places, I guess, because if you're guiding, I guess five days a week, that's one thing. But then mm-hmm. let's just say you, you had some downtime. Do you ever check up on spots or do you just make a phone call to check? Because again, like we said, there's so many different areas. Yeah. I mean, I like to check up myself. Uh, I mean, and I've been known, you know, uh, you know, sometimes we'll get like rains and stuff like that, you know, um, not necessarily like the rain today where we've got, you know, it's pounded for a good bit and it's rained for mm-hmm. a while for you know quite a few hours. Uh, but there's been other times where uh, back early in my guiding career, we uh, I had scheduled a trip for the Potomac. Uh, we got pounded with rain uh, the day before and but it was a very short pounding i mean it was like like an hour or maybe two hour long storm uh but it was enough to make the water come up so you know that's you know you got to kind of keep in the keep track of you know where these rivers where they come from and stuff like that and how these weather patterns move across them and you know the radar on the weather and stuff like that's you know great to watch uh and check and you know to you know get an idea but the water like i said the water came up and uh i had to move the trip you know to uh from i was we were actually gonna fish the potomac that day and i ended up moving it to the shenandoah because again you get the potomac that generally has that uh west to east flow and the uh shenandoah that's got that north or south to north flow um you know if the weather pattern is not huge one of them is going to be good to fish you know? okay that's smart. so i try not to cancel trips if i don't have to that you know? that is very interesting and i even remember that from um it's not it was in fishing on the b side i watched that uh when i was driving up here this morning crap um the show you did with him uh mm-hmm. anyway shot shenandoah smallmouth assault thank you yes yeah. and and you you guys had that quick conversation there about like okay this slows down here we make that move and that's what's so yeah. I, you're right that's so interesting that you have so many little places that you can try to adjust yes to make sure that trips work which is yeah. huge because i'm assuming if you're on just the new river uh as an example you don't mm-hmm. have as many options as the main stem of the upper potomac just the upper potomac yeah. and then you have the shenandoah north fork south fork too yeah, there's a yeah. lot of variance there yeah. yeah and you do have some variance like with the with the new though you know like you, you know, the green briar um you know and i believe some of those guys do like the upper golly uh but you know that's you know it's dependent on your on your levels and stuff like that so Mm, gotcha 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 upper potomac when it comes to the the main stem of it i Mm -hmm. really find that absolutely fascinating because i feel like it is so it's not in the limelight at all and it's so close to dc and loudon county Mm -hmm. and so if you guys don't know, depending on where you live, Loudoun County, I think, is the either is in the top three richest counties in the world. And you have this strip of this river that it's there's a there's an access issue. I'll, I will say that, but yeah. no one talks about it. And then you and and Jeff Green, who comes on, who also he's a jet boat, he guides out of that lot. There, you guys are starting to talk about like, no, guys, this is this is coming. This mm-hmm. is going to be a thing someday. Yeah, what's changed? And maybe it's just that we've been waiting for 20 years for our, it's finally our time. Yeah. Good, I, but. Well, you know, now I think, I think, um, I think eyes being open to issues that have been, that have gone on with the rivers and stuff. Uh, and then I know like, you know, the Maryland uh, DNR, the fisheries biologists uh, started doing some restocking on the Potomac in 2019. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I went to meetings uh, with them, uh, you know, two, meet, two meetings, one meeting with, uh, with just the Maryland fisheries biologists and then a meeting with West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia fisheries biologists, like a great big round table meeting, um, you know, where they kind of, you know, it was, a, it was a great thing because it got everybody to kind of got those, all those groups, those four groups, four states to kind of maybe start uh communicating with each other on you know things issues that they've had how they've resolved them and things like that i mean i can't say for sure you'd have to talk to those fisheries biologists but uh it it was a great meeting but maryland has done a really good job with uh you know some restocking because when in the meeting you know we talked you know five six years worth of high water events at spawn and and post spawn uh year class of fish in areas that that are just no more they're just they're not there and so maryland's done a really good job with uh doing some restocking 
Do you think next year we there was a big Brunswick tournament that happened last year, um, and we had some of the individuals on that, that did extremely well in that tournament. I believe they won it. Um, twenty pound plus bags. Do you think you're going to see a dirty twenty one coming out of the Shenandoah or the Upper Potomac next year, or do you think it's possible we a couple years off? Yeah, I think I think it's possible. I think it's definitely possible. So I, I, both rivers are in really. I mean, you know, fishing wise, I mean they're they're in good shape. You know, I I'm not seeing fish with lesions. <laughs> on them i see catfish with some lesions on them but i you know i don't know i don't know if that's from them because they'll dig around and underneath rocks and stuff like that you know maybe they're and it generally seems to be like where their problem is is on their heads Mm -hmm. um but yeah i think that both rivers are um you know i think they're they're set up pretty good you know i mean as long as everything goes well um and uh you know we don't have too many high water events and stuff 2018 man just really yeah. It put the beat down on the Potomac. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if you couldn't, if you were fishing, you couldn't survive that. I mean, you were done. So the fish we're catching now, not all of them, but, you know, a lot of them, you know, big ones have survived that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, those are, those are the fish there. Those genes are strong. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I think we mentioned this the last time that you were on about like how important it is to have the right water at the right time. Mm-hmm. And that goes into it as well. Cause we don't have the, the spawning bays necessarily as some other maybe estuaries or river systems, apologies, yeah. will probably have and how important that is. And, and hopefully we get, cause again, like guys, at least this is what my hypothesis is when it comes to any fishery, you need to have that moment in time when it's really good because once it's really good, people's eyes are on it. And then people want to keep it that way mm-hmm. and i feel like i'm hoping that we're getting to that point that when the upper potomac and shenandoah are starting to pump out 20 pound bags of smallies yeah and a lot of light gets on it all of a sudden then you're going to be even more devastated if it goes away so you're going to do more to keep it around and i think i think that's coming i hear the rumors mm-hmm. now i've caught some nice ones on the upper potomac where i'm at near a conic jig so i don't know I, I think maybe and i don't want to jinx it that we're coming into maybe the golden era of 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 the Shenandoah and the Upper Potomac here, yeah, um, and I think I, I think there's an ebb and flow to that, yeah, you know, uh, or at least it's it just it seems to me that it's been an ebb and flow, you know, uh, you know, I remember back in the early '90s or mid '90s and late '90s that, you know, the fishing in into early 2000s, you know, that the fishing was you know spectacular uh, on those on you know especially the Shenandoah and uh, and then it kind of started to tail off and. You know, whether it was fish kills, uh, high water events, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, it's, um, like I said, I think there's an ebb and flow and to, to the whole thing. And I think we're getting back into some good some good times. And, uh, you know, hopefully it lasts and, and it sticks around. And I hope so, too. And I, and I think it is. I think we're more conservation savvy now than we ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, there's more media attention on things, which I think it, it, yeah. for as much as people complain online, I think it does do positive things as well mm-hmm. to bringing light to, to issues, but also to try to keep things actually good. Um, I, I got to ask you before we leave, get a, a yeah. couple of tips like right now for anyone that wants to go out there that wants to fish the Upper Potomac Shenandoah this winter. Mm-hmm. Like what, what advice would you give them? Just find deep water, man. You know, find deep, deep, slow water eddies. Uh, you know, these fish aren't going to try and battle the current. They're going to sit in those eddies and, uh, you know, fish it low and slow. I mean, I've got a hole in the Shenandoah that I can drive to. Uh, and sometimes on my way to like, you know, go get groceries. I'm like, well, I'm going to go and fish for a little bit before I get groceries. So, you know, I'll go out there and fish for a couple hours and I can stand and bank fish and, uh, you know, without having to put a boat in and stuff and, you know, get shuttle and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, kind of, you know, it, it, it scratches the itch a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, and just, like I said, low and slow and, you know, I'll chuck a, a, you know, a Ned rig out there, let it drop to the bottom and just bring it back nice and slow. So, and what would the shortest float be that somebody could do if they want to take a kayak out this winter on the Shenandoah, mm-hmm. particularly like, I know you can do a lot of long ones, but like, cause again, Shenandoah is unique because there's not a lot of bank access, honestly, for yeah. a person. So you have to float it. What what yeah. would be the shortest, like, you know, two hour float they could do? Shortest, probably uh, Morgan's Ford, Morgan's the, Ford, where the low water bridge is down to uh, Farms Riverview. 
uh, boat ramp. I think I think that's like a four, maybe five mile stretch. Oh, that's not bad. From Riverview down to 50 is uh, about a six mile stretch. Uh, so, you know, that's probably the shortest, you know, if you're, you know, you keep, keep it up. Low water, of course, it just makes it tougher, you know, and that's what I've been suffering through, uh, you know, uh, you know, the past, you know, couple months is this low clear water, uh, you know, my you know typical nine nine and a half mile stretch uh i can do it but it's an all-day event and that's the thing that i think protects the main stem is uh, let's say I, I guys and you know from when i did my um my live stream of that tournament i won there's a stretch that i could show you on a map you can go to it but it's going to be all day like it's mm-hmm. not like this is juice that you can easily get to like you have to either float it or have a jet boat and if you float it it's all freaking day to get there yeah. and i feel like that does protect the main stem a lot depending yes. on on your on your drop-off points yep yep i would i would agree and i tell you what i can't tell how many times i've seen people out and i'm like where are you floating to I, yes exactly <laughs> they're like route seven and i'm like all right you're like three miles I, from route 50 i tried so, to do 50 crazy? to seven one time i looked at the map and said like that's not that bad if you draw a straight line and <laughs> yeah. i my girlfriend at the time my, my wife now girlfriend at the time she's gonna kill me because we didn't get there till like 11 <laughs> o'clock at night and that's what's so unique about that is again, it's you got to float it, and if you're going to float it, you got to be very strategic to get yeah. to your spots. Um, and I already know in the comment section you're going to ask, well, what about us bank guys? This is where the Upper Potomac is so unique, is because of that towpath. That towpath. That man. is a game changer it for is. bank guys. It is. It is. And and I mean, I mean, what a nice thing to be able to do. You know, you grab your grab your uh, backpack, you know, with your tackle in it and mm-hmm. rod, and just walk the towpath. And there's plenty of parking places, you know, along the towpath, and uh, just walk the towpath, uh, and, and you know, then hop off the towpath and you know, down to the river. So yeah, it's very, uh, it's very nice to, that, that, you know, we've got that on the Potomac. So. It, it really is. And I had a guy on here, I think it was in September. Um, and he talked about, he's like one of those electric bikes and he does catfishing. And mm-hmm. then that's what he does is he can load up his electric bike and he can go yeah. all the way wherever he wants yeah. and he can fish it. And that's a really, until he mentioned that, I was like, Oh crap, you're right. We have a lot of bank fishing opportunities. I mm-hmm. never thought of that before. Yeah. Yeah, and that that gives us that golden opportunity to do it. Um, so if you guys want some bank fishing spots, I can give it to you as well in the comment section. Just let me know because I I live right there on um, at Williamsport, so I know about that whole stretch. And I can help you out there as well. But uh, Travis, again, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate mm-hmm. you having you on. Is there anything that we need to talk about? Anything else that we forgot or should touch base on? Uh, no, not that I can think of. You know, can't wait for Turkey Day. Yes, I really can't wait either. And then you're leaving here, what, a couple days before Turkey to get down to the new? Yeah, I'm leaving. Uh, so not, uh, I'll, I'll be leaving the Friday before Thanksgiving. Okay, gotcha. And then planning to come back uh, Monday, maybe Tuesday. Uh, you know, if everything goes well and the fishing's, you know, fishing's good and everything, uh, you know, we'll we'll stay till, we'll come back on Tuesday. So we'll fish Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, or we might just fish Saturday and Sunday and then come back on Monday or, you know, have a short trip on Monday and then come back. So it'll be. So fishing's good. You're staying oh, longer. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> are you taking your own boat or are you no. going to supply everything? No, that, I mean, I've got a boat. I've got a boat that I could take, but, yeah. uh, you know, it just saves having to haul it down oh there, uh, which I mean, I don't, I wouldn't mind. Uh, my trailer's definitely set up to be, to go long distance, uh, you know, because of the wheels on it, you know, or not you know, the little, you know, donut Harry Holman or, uh, trailers are actually full sized, uh, you know, wheels. Um, so it's like, it's set up, uh, and I would, but down there we use a different type of boat. So we t- typically go with a more Spartan frame, uh, huh. which I have a, another boat that's, you know, in the mix to just stay Spartan and, uh, be specifically for and some of the why they do that too is because of the white water on the new river and as well access uh because it's you can't there's no place to back a trailer down yeah, to get it, it to the river the so you gotta throw it over the side and yeah drag it down you know and those spartan frame boats two guys could carry one of those you know half a half a mile if they had to you know down to the river good lord that's insane yeah that's so freaking cool yeah. um whatever it takes to get the job done no yeah you got to do what you got to <laughs> do right and that toboggan video guys i'm gonna definitely the first snowstorm we get i'm probably gonna drop that on instagram again of <laughs> yeah. you tobogganing i think that was fantastic <laughs> whoever was the cameraman that was the right moment that's the flag on iwo jima i just yes. absolutely love that thing <laughs> Um, 
Oh, I gotta even say too. So guys, for the the person that's gonna win this grand prize of a fishing trip with with yours truly right here, um, to give them a vibe for the winner, he's probably listening right mm-hmm. now. What what's the best time you think they should come out with you? Is it just the winter time? When would you suggest them trying to use that trip with you? Uh, I mean, they could they could use it any time. Uh, big thing is is you know if to coordinate it, uh, it's best to give me as longer of a head up heads up to get the tri- trip scheduled. Um, you know because then once it's once it's in the books, it's there. It's mm-hmm. not it's not moving. Uh, uh, but you know, winter time, I mean, really is a great time to get out there and fish. And sometimes, uh, you know, you'll go out and, uh, you know, the, the bite might be a little bit slow, but you just watch that thermometer and it just, sometimes it just takes a couple, couple degrees of, uh, a rise in temperature and mm-hmm. then it's on like Donkey Kong, man. And it's, you know, you're, you're fishing and winter time, generally shorter stretches, uh, we do, I do have a motor for the, uh, for the raft and hmm. I will, uh, just kind of, you know, as providing that I can do it, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, rocks and stuff like that ledges that I have to come across, but I can motor generally from hole to hole. And, uh, you know, we just set up on those holes and fish winter time. I serve, you know, hot soup and sandwiches. So, you know, it's that's freaking awesome. Yeah. Just bring some gloves and stuff like that. Dress, you know, if you ski. Do any kind of winter winter mm-hmm. sports uh, activities, you know, you'd be fine in the boat in the wintertime. Yeah, guys, I mean, like, wintertime fishing is, again, you can do the dragging thing, too, but then, you know, jerk baits, throwing crank baits, blade baits, like, there, there are techniques where it's not just you're freezing to death. You can get yeah. some movement and some blood flowing, yeah. too, and I think that's the one thing when I was a kid was always like, well, I have to, like, drag something so slowly i just want to throw myself in the river it's like th- there mm-hmm. is that segment of it but there's also this thing where you can power fish with a jerk bait where you're actually moving something and you'll get the fish to react and it does help warm you up a little bit and especially it's just you out there which was so cool whether it's a shenandoah or if you want to go to lake anna in december it's so cool to have like the body of water to yourself it's mm-hmm. so surreal and just really relaxing yeah and like my like my friend scotty always says it just takes one Yep. It just takes one to make the whole trip wonderful. (laughs) Travis, thanks again. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Again, guys, link in the episode description to all of his stuff. Um, This episode and every other episode that drops after it until the 17th will be up for this grand prize. More information about that to come. And we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.